All right, folks. So I am about a little more than halfway through uh, the sixth episode of Making a Murderer. And I have got so many notes on this particular episode that I just had to stop halfway through and record some of this shit before I keep going. And I am so confident in the things that I am going to present to you that I brought out the cigarette holder. Yes, because I feel the need to gesture with my cigarette. This is how pissed off Kratz has gotten me. You know, it's bad when I bust out the anti-mame. All right, so let's get started, shall we? On the 2nd of March, Pogle and Kratz, is it just me or does that sound like a really bad fucking pen and Teller ripoff? Pogel and Kratz, the magicians of the courtroom. Uh, <laughs> sounds like they belong on The Tonight Show, doesn't it? Uh, Pogel and Kratz hold a press conference, during which Kratz states that Avery stabbed Teresa Halbach in the stomach in the trailer. And then states that Stephen Avery handed the knife to Brendan Dassey and told him to cut her throat. But in this podcast that he was interviewed on, he states that he didn't expect to find any of Teresa Hallbach's DNA in the trailer because of, of, of garden gnomes. I don't know what the fuck excuse he gave. I know that he stated that the, uh, the throat slit was little more than a scratch, which, you know, is just horse shit of the first degree. But come on, Kratz, you, you flat out stated that you think she was stabbed in the stomach in the bedroom. How do you explain the lack of blood? Again? Oh, that's right, you don't. All right, moving on. So... Uh, he also states in this uh, particular press conference that they have a substantial amount of physical evidence that now makes sense. Like what? What do you have? And what sense does it make? Because I have yet to see anything that makes even one fucking shred of sense, Kratz. One shred of sense. None. Now, uh, on the 1st of March, as we all know, Brendan Dassey was arrested. All of a sudden, at 6.30 p.m. on March 1st, the police return to Stephen Avery's property to do yet another search four months later. Oh, let me let me think. Hold on. I'm a mom, so occasionally my brain goes to shit. November, December, January, February, March. Yeah, four months later. They had the property for eight days. They didn't find a fucking bullet then, but magically they go back and all of a sudden there's a bullet. And it, let's get one thing straight, people. They didn't find a bullet. They found a bullet fragment. Very different. Okay. A bullet fragment means only a piece of the bullet. And it's very difficult to definitively link a bullet fragment with a specific gun, especially when it's a 22 that's been smashed to shit. Just saying. Um, now, 11, uh, uh, November 6th was the first actual search of the garage. They found 11 22 caliber casings, but here's something they don't tell you in the documentary. That entire 44 acre property was covered top to bottom, tip to toe, stem to stern with Shell casings. Want to know why? It's a fucking salvage yard. They were hunting rabbits and deer and other shit on the, shooting at cars for recreation. There were casings all over the goddamn place. So casings alone do not a murder make. All right? We good on this? The, the bullet was discovered the day of or after Brendan Dassey's arrest. Does that seem a little convenient to anybody? Because if it doesn't, it should. Uh, Kratz brings up the uh, the notepad with Teresa Hallbach's number on it 
Why is this suspicious? She called earlier in the day and left a fucking voice message. Obviously, he has to write down the number in order to call it. Why is this suspicious? It's not suspicious, Kratz. Quit fucking spinning shit in your own goddamn fairy tale, you freak. And then he points out the bill of sale as though that's a piece of evidence. He was selling a fucking car. Of course, he's going to have a bill of sale in his house. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Good Lord, people. My son's over here laughing at me. I would like everybody to know you can blame my 15 year old son for these videos. He's been saying for months that I have to do these videos because of the shit that comes out of my mouth. I'm so sorry. Now the bullet fragment, they bring in Miss Culhane. And yes, I said it properly because it's fucking Irish. And so am I a lot And she washed it with a buffer to extract the DNA. However, her control sample for this test, she herself contaminated. Now, protocol states that if there's a contaminated sample, she must throw out that entire test, meaning she has to state on the fucking report that the test was inconclusive because of a contaminated control sample, which she did not do. She filed a deviation of protocol for the first time in her entire career for this case. Why? Because there was no more fucking DNA to test. That's why. That's why, folks. There was nothing else that could have had Teresa Hallbach's DNA on it. You know, because I'm pretty sure that Colburn and Link had already used up all the fucking DNA that they had found on the toothbrush of Teresa's to retest it. Now, the state fought the presence of the defense at the testing, they stated that there was a too, that too many people would up the risk of contamination. Well, even without the fucking defense there, it got contaminated, folks. Why was this not taken into consideration? Um, now, this, I don't know how many of you noticed this, but Culhane's on the stand and she goes, <coughs> and she coughs into her hand. No DNA specialist I have ever seen coughs into their fucking hand. At least no DNA specialist worth their fucking salt. They cough into their elbow because that is how they are trained to do. Because what do they do with their hands, folks? They handle evidence. And they do it even when they're not in the lab. It just becomes second nature to them. Can we really trust a hand cougher? <clears throat> uh, now, Culhane did take a phone message from Fossbender. Am I the only one that finds it hilarious when one of the defense attorneys refers to him as Fassbender? Yeah, I love the little insert of the word ass into his name, too. Um, and on this phone message, Fassbender tells her, try to put her in his house or garage. Well, now we know why she filed a deviation of protocol, don't we? Hmm. Uh... And here's the thing is that uh, even Miss Culhane stated that there was no visible blood on the bullet fragment. All she could say was that there were nucleated cells, but she said there was that there was no visible evidence of blood. If there was no visible evidence of blood, then that fucking bullet fragment never went through a skull. Just saying, folks. Never mind him. That's just my two-year-old practicing his pterodactyl screech. Um, now, considering that she did not disclose in the order that, that there was a deviation of protocol. That entire bit of evidence should have been thrown out of court. And I'm frankly very upset with Judge Willis for not throwing it out of court. That was bad business, Judge Willis. Bad, bad, bad judge. Now you go to your chambers and think about what you did. While you're at it, clean your room and eat your vegetables and do your homework. We'll discuss further in my very next video. Thank you for watching.